What's up everyone, welcome to Workshop Rebuild. In today's episode, I'll be sharing with you guys the John Deere 400 rear end. That is the transmission and the rear differential, which is right here on the jack stands. I will be tearing it into bits and pieces, so I'll give you guys a full teardown video on this. But before I do that, I will share with you guys the details on what we're looking at in today's video. I want to thank you for tuning in to a new video of Workshop Rebuild. I will be tearing into the John Deere 400 rear end right away, but I did notice 80% of my viewers that are watching my videos do not subscribe. I don't know why, but you can tell me down below what you guys don't like about my videos and or what I could do better so we can grow a little bit faster. So without further ado, let's get right into the rear end. This right here is the John Deere 400 rear end that we're looking at. This is not manufactured or produced in any way by John Deere, but it's produced for John Deere. Uh, this is a Peerless 2514 rear end. So that is exactly what we're looking at today. This is a two-speed optional transmission. So what that means is right here on this shaft, we can pull it out and push it in, which will allow us to change to first or second gear. Obviously there is neutral, which is in this position right here. I believe it can come out even more. So that right there is your high speed. You want to push it in. Sometimes you have to turn your, your wheels to get it engaged. This is neutral position right here. And if I would push it in, and I, I'm going to turn it so the gears mesh nicely inside. And that right there is first gear. So this houses the transmission, which is on the top half. That is everything above the axle. So that's the top half. Of this housing the bottom half houses a bull gear that transmits power to the left axle and the right axle actually looking at it right now we are the other way around but i will come to this side and i will share with you guys how it looks like from the top this is the left side of the machine and that is the right side i marked it right there on the brake drum when we're looking at it from the top we have six bolts three on the left and three on the right these bolts will mount directly up to our main frame. On the back of the transmission, we have our sight tube. Uh, this tube allows us to see the level of the fluid that we're gonna add. We have a breather right over here. Uh, this will allow us to fill up with transmission fluid and it will not bubble up on the funnel. The level is really important, so you want the level of fluid from between this point and this point of your housing. Obviously, that would be around this height. Since I'm already on the back end of this rear end, I will share with you guys where the lower arms of the three-point hook up to. They are hooked up on either side of the axle, so on the left side and on the right side. We have hookup points there and over here. These have been fixed in the past. The previous owner probably had to fix these up because he had too much weight on the three-point, but that's no big deal. It looks like a very good fix. I just noticed this when I was cleaning it up. Off to the left, we have our brake drum. I will be pulling it off with this puller to, in today's video, so I will share with you guys that. This is probably one of the first steps I will be taking. I will have to take off the brake drum. That will give me access to the brakes that are inside of here. The brakes get activated with this lever, so this will hook up to your brake linkage. So when I pull this forward like that, it transfers the leverage to the brakes inside. And I don't know if you guys can see that, but close or between the brake drum uh, you will see the brake pads open and close right there it's very hard to see but they do move down in there so in today's video i will be sharing with you guys the disassembly on the brakes the axles and the main part which is the transmission and the bull gear down below uh, i have to remove the side parts first and then work my way to the center so from left to the right and then we'll land in the middle once i'm in the middle i can split it on this seam of the housing. That's probably one of the last steps, but I will get there. And then once I have all of this apart right here, I will have everything laid out and we'll go through everything as always. So I just shared with you guys a little bit of information on the John Deere 400 rear end. I didn't go into detail because I don't have the parts laid out in front of me. It still has one assembly, so there's not much to talk about. Once everything is disassembled, I can get into detail, share with you guys some shafts, bearings, seals, and so on. Uh, some parts I will be replacing, so I will share it with you guys those parts in the rebuild video, so stay tuned for that. 
But without further ado, let me share with you guys a time-lapse video on the teardown of the John Deere 400 rear end.
So I'll start the time lapse right here. I finished up with the teardown on the John Deere 400 rear end. On the left side of the screen, you guys will see the external parts on this assembly. And on the right side of the screen, you guys will see the internal parts as well as the main housing for the transmission and bow gear. So I'll share with you guys the external parts and give you guys an overview on that. And then I'll share with you guys the internals of this rear end. Right now, I will just share with you guys a rough overview on all the parts once I have purchase parts like bearings or seals for the rebuild uh, I will bring you guys back for a complete rebuild video and then I will share with you guys the details on all the parts which are involved in this rear end walking up to the table which is on the side I have most of the external parts laid out I use some of these tools on the side so I won't get into that uh, in the middle we have the brake pads the springs that I removed this is the plate which holds all the brake pads in place so we have one which is the left side and this is the right side. I always mark everything when I take uh, things apart so it's easier for me to know where they go. Uh, these are the two brackets which hold the rear end to the main frame. The housing of the half axle uh, is bolted to the main housing with these eight bolts right here. So there are different sizes. As you guys can see, they're all different sizes. And uh, these ones happen to be even Allen keys. So I'm not sure if these are original or not, but uh, they are different lengths. Uh, these bolts right here hold the main housing together so the left and the right side housing these are half inch bolts and they are all identical i don't know exactly how many but there are quite a few off to the right we have the linkages for our brakes so this little piece uh, holds our brake pads and that locates it once you pull on your lever up front this whole shaft will pivot and open up our brake pads and squeeze on our brake drums. So enough of the external parts, you guys probably wanna see the internal parts, so let me share with you guys all those on the white table. So on the white table, I have all the parts laid out. I laid out a little piece of plastic because these parts on the right are very oily and I did not clean them off yet. On the left, I took everything apart on this pan. This is very handy, I use this for almost all my engine rebuilds or teardowns. So this is really handy in case you guys don't wanna get your tabletop dirty. This is the main housing. This is much bigger than the other half of the housing. As you guys can see, it's wider. The other half is basically just a cover. This right here is aluminum. Within this housing, we have machined areas where our main shafts will locate. So down below, we have room for our main axle and that has a big bearing. We have three smaller bearings, which are below, and those hold our other gears. Uh, this is basically the transmission side, and the bottom end is your differential. Uh, this right here happens to be the shaft for the shifter. Uh, that actually goes all the way out, and behind that bearing, which is this side, houses a seal. I will be changing this seal, so I will get the number, and in the rebuild video, you guys will have access to this seal. So that's enough talk on the housing. Looking at the parts laid out, we have a whole bunch of gears. This makes up our transmission side of things. So when we look at it, the biggest gear is on the bottom. This gear right here, which is very wide, transfers power to our bull gear. So this is the lowest gear on the transmission, which transfers quite a bit of power to that bull gear. Above this shaft, we have our shifter shaft. Um, that is a smaller shaft and has the ability to shift our two speed gears with this lever and that lever is right here in the housing so this can move in and out and this will allow us to select our gears i will talk about this more in the rebuild video but this is the assembly and as you guys can see i mark everything so i know what the top is and where everything should go i do have everything on video and you guys will see this video but this is just what i do behind the scenes on the top, this is basically the input side of the rear end. We have a beveled gear. The beveled gear, which is on the hydraulic motor, will power this beveled gear right here. And that transfers power to these smaller gears and down below into our transmission. As I mentioned before, this bottom gear right here transfers power to the bull gear, which I did not take apart yet. Um, that's still one, but there are only four bolts on the side, which I have to take off and then I can see inside the bull gear. Um, it's probably full of oil and that's why I didn't take it apart as of yet. 
I have to make some more room on the table, but I will be doing that very soon. And in the rebuild video, you guys will see that bull gear. On the left and on the right side of the bull gear, we have these special bearings. These are basically thrust bearings and they mount on the side of the axle and they are housed between the main housing and the half shaft housings. So the axle, which is on the left or on the right side of the bull gear is housed within this housing. And we have on the very end, we have a bearing and we have a lip seal. These two seals will be replaced and I will get you guys those numbers as well. On the bottom end, we have room for that thrust bearing, which is right there in the middle, and that gets housed right there. This in the middle is the cover plate, and this has the exact same cutouts or machined areas like the main housing over there. It's just mirrored, and we have room for our bull gear or our axle shafts. We have room for our bottom gear, our shifter gear, and our top gear. Uh, these are actually shafts, but that's where they are located. Obviously, we will seal everything off with a gasket. I will probably make my own and then add silicone on both sides. So I just gave you guys a quick and rough overview on all the external and internal parts. When I disassembled it, I marked everything so it's easier for me. Obviously, you guys will see this video, so you guys will have a helping hand. But for me, I mark everything, and to me, that's just the best way of doing things. I obviously take a lot of pictures as well, so when I go and rebuild it, it's super simple, and I don't have to rely on any diagrams unless there are some parts which are damaged. So I will try and purchase all the seals which are within this rear end, and if I see anything damaged like a washer or a bearing, I will exchange that as well. So I will give you all those numbers in the rebuild video and I will leave links down in the description so you guys can purchase your parts as well. So if you guys like this video, please hit that like button down below. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Comment if you have any questions or even send me an email. I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. And I hope I'll see you guys in the next video.